Today we are going to chat about something super important for your website's SEO, the robots.txt file. We'll explain what is a robots.txt file, what directives Google crawlers support and some best practices you should follow. So sit back, get comfortable and let's go. The robots.txt file is a text file that provides instructions, calls directives to web crawlers, like search engine bots, about what pages or sections of the site they can crawl or not. So this is one of the most important files on your website as it helps ensure your servers are not overloaded with bots crawling the website. However, a common misconception is that robots.txt file prevents a page from getting indexed by search engines. But that's not true. Now let's discuss what a robots.txt file does. The default assumption is that bots can crawl, index and rank all the pages on your website unless you specifically disallow crawling or use a noindex meta tag. So if a robots.txt file doesn't exist or is not accessible, crawlers will act like there were not any restrictions in place. Additionally, crawlers don't have to follow the instructions existing in the robots.txt file. This means bad bots can crawl pages on a website even if you ask them to not do it. Fortunately, most crawlers are respectable and will follow your instructions. Now, it's time to see how a robots.txt file looks like to be valid. The file must include three things. The directives, these are the instructions that each user agent named in the same group has to follow. The user agents. This is the identification of a crawler. For example, the Google crawler is called Google Bot. And groups. A group names the user agent and the directives that it must follow. It's also common and possible to mention the XML sitemap URL in the robots.txt file, but it's not mandatory. If you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing. Our goal at SEO testing is to save you time so you spend less time pulling data into Excel and more time thinking about how to get more visitors from Google. Now back to the video. When it comes to robots.txt rules, these are the essential things you must know. The file must be named robots.txt and be located at the root of the domain. It must be UTF-8 encoded it will only be valid for the same protocol and domain, must have only one directive per line, use only relative paths. Directives are case sensitive, comments start with a hash and don't get read by crawlers. On top of this, crawlers usually process groups from top to bottom. In general, crawlers only follow one group, so you should avoid targeting user agents more than once or using conflicting directives. Googlebot and Bingbot will default to the most specific rules as they are usually less restrictive. Googlebot is probably the most important crawler on the web and it sometimes acts differently to other bots. So here's a summary of how it interprets robots.txt directives in some scenarios. Googlebot will ignore invalid lines, comments and directives without a path. When robots.txt returns 4x codes other than 429, Google considers there are not crawling limitations. For 5x and 429 codes, Google considers the site disallowed, but will keep trying to crawl it. If after 30 days the file is still inaccessible, they will consider there are no restrictions on the website. Also, Google accepts more than one XML sitemap per robots.txt file. In case of conflicting rules, Google uses the less restrictive directives. Moving forward, here is a complete list of directives you can use on a robots.txt file. 1. Sitemap. This directive shows the URL where the XML sitemap of a website is, making it easier for crawlers to find it. This directive is supported both inside and outside of groups. 2. Disallow. The disallow directive tells crawlers they aren't allowed to visit the URL or site section matching the rejects. This is the directive you will use more frequently in your robots.txt file as by default there are no limitations on the pages bots can visit. 3. Allow. The allow directive tells crawlers they can visit and crawl a URL or matching rejects. This rule is mainly used to overwrite a disallow directive when you want bots to crawl a page from a blocked directory. 4. Crawl delay. The crawl delay directive limits how frequently crawlers visit URLs to avoid overloading the servers. Not all crawlers support this directive and they can interpret the number of the crawl delay differently. 5. No index. 
The no index directive in the robots.txt prevents URLs from getting indexed. However, Google ended support for it in 2019 as they never documented it. 6. Nofollow The nofollow directive tells crawlers not to follow links in a URL. This is similar to what the nofollow tag does, but instead of doing it for a link, it applies to every URL in the page. Google also doesn't support this directive. Here is a list of directives that Googlebot supports in the robots.txt files. User agent, disallow, allow and sitemap. Also, Google documentation says that ads bot should be explicitly named as a user agent, so using the wildcard will not include a Google ads bot. Next up, we have some useful examples of rules you can create with robots.txt. First, you can create a rule to avoid crawling a specific directory or folder. For example, to prevent crawling the admin pages of a website. Another thing you can do is block a specific user agent from crawling your website. Similarly, you can also prevent crawling a single page. Another example includes blocking Google images from crawling the images on your website as a way to make them less likely to be indexed. Blocking specific file types is also possible. Now comes everyone's favorite part, best practice tips for robots.txt. Tip number one, use rejects to simplify directives. The robots.txt file supports the use of rejects and this will make declaring the instructions in the file simpler because you can group instructions into one expression instead of writing one directive for each URL. Using rejects makes this process faster and more efficient to maintain the file. Tip number two, mention each user agent only once. Most crawlers read the robots.txt from top to bottom and follow the first applicable group for their user agent and those user agents will only follow one group of directives. If you mention a crawler more than once, they will ignore the other groups. However, to avoid confusion, it's better to list the specific user agents at the top and put the group with the wildcard of all non-mentioned crawlers at the bottom. Tip number three, be specific with directives. Being specific in the robots.txt pays off and prevents unintentional consequences of bots not crawling essential sections of your site. For example, imagine you don't want bots to crawl the cookies folder and you create a disallow rule as it appears on the screen. This disallow rule will also prevent bots from crawling every URL that contains forward slash cookies. So you should end that expression with the second forward slash to make the directive clear to only target this directory. And these are the essential things you need to know about the robots.txt file. Now, if you want to make the most out of your Google Search Console data, use SEO testing to set up SEO tests and know what changes to your site contribute to the increase of traffic. We have a 14-day trial for you to test our tool. Sign up using the link in the description. Thanks for watching.